Hey, how's it going guys? Today I'm going to be taking you through a really instructive attacking game that I played on line the other day. So quickly before we get into it, if you enjoy the video, please like and subscribe. You know, I'm a small channel and it'd be pretty cool if we could grow. Uh, also, before we start, I just want to say thank you for um, the kind comments that I've been getting recently. Um, I genuinely really appreciate it because like, you know, it feels like obviously I'm a small fish in a big pond, but I still enjoy making these videos regardless. But knowing that you guys enjoy it is, you know, it's quite meaningful. So thank you for that. But anyway, let's get into the game. So I open with E4. We have E5, Knight C3, Knight C6. We have the Vienna game and my opponent copies me. So we both have a really strong grip over a, like uh opposing pawn pushes i guess because neither of us can advance our d pawn to d4 or d5 so i go bishop c4 my opponent plays h6 which is an odd move but like i mean it stops a knight from potentially going there or a bishop from going there in the future but really he should probably be trying to develop some of his other pieces or playing d6 to get this bishop out it's just unnecessary so I go d3 to open up my dark squared bishop. My opponent goes knight f6. And I go f4, challenging the pawn in the center immediately. My opponent plays b6 to defend, obviously. Um, Z, say here he plays something like bishop e7. I can maybe take and try and play d4 in the future. But d6 is always a good move just to support the pawn and open the bishop. So I go knight f6 just applying further pressure to the pawn. And my opponent goes knight d4, challenging my knight. Here, I should just take. And according to the computer, this is good. But I opt to castle instead. The reason I do this is because I'm kind of hoping... For a situation here where my opponent takes here with the knight, plays the bishop here. And the reason I move my king is so that when my rook is attacked, I can put my rook on the G file. And I, I love these positions. The computer never really approves of them. But I find it so easy to play. Uh, so I absolutely love them. My opponent isn't so kind. As to play into my hands and instead he just takes on f3 and here it's not quite the same if i take with the g pawn because previously i'd because my bishop had played bishop g4 i was able to move my king to h1 to free up the g1 square for my rook but here after bishop h3 i have to move my rook and it's not getting to the g file and it's kind of stuck behind two pawns so it's not as useful and that's why I instead take with the queen, right? If I take with the rook, obviously bishop g4 skewers my rook to my queen. So, all that to say queen takes f3, bishop g4 anyway, attacking my queen. And I put my queen on g3. There's no ideas of the knight coming to h5 because then the bishop will be hanging. And also if the bishop moves... The G pawn could be weak in the future. So I was really happy with this position. My opponent takes and I take with the bishop. Again, there's no idea of knight to h5 with a fork because the bishop's hanging. Here my opponent plays g5. And I was trying to calculate various sacrifices to remove the defender of the bishop. Because the knight is defending the bishop. And if I take here, then I open up an attack on the knight of my rook. And then I win the bishop. But none of them worked. Because in this um, variation, the material comes out to me being down in exchange for a pawn. And you could argue that I'm going to get my rook to the f file and target f7. But I thought even after a move like rook h7, this doesn't really work. Okay, maybe knight d5 here is winning or whatever. But it's 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 not very simple. 
and I'm down in exchange for no real reason. Like, there's no reason for me to go down in exchange. So I just play bishop e3, and I threaten the same thing, where if he makes a nothing move, bishop e7, I'm going to go up two pieces for a rook, because I'm going to remove the defender off the bishop. Which is why my opponent plays bishop h5, so that the bishop's no longer under attack. And here I go bishop d4, which I was a big fan of. The computer kind of likes e5, it prefers bishop d4. E5 makes a lot of sense though, and I didn't really consider it. But bishop d4 just pins the knight to the rook, and I'm threatening to win it because I've got two attackers to one defender. This is the idea of putting pressure on the pinned piece. And I don't think black can actually save it. Because after he goes bishop g7, sure, he has two defenders to two attackers. But the knight is still pinned, because if the knight moves, the bishop hangs. And because he put his bishop on h5, the knight can't move to h5 to defend the bishop, and he can't go to, d to e8 to defend the bishop. So it's still pinned. So here I go knight d5, just attacking the knight again. And here I calculate that after knight takes d5, if I take the knight, then he takes here, and I'm down a piece, right? Because he took my knight and my bishop. My bishop. So I instead go bishop takes g7, which means that the rook's hanging and the knight's hanging. He goes rook to g8. And here I can do this, but I decide that my bishop is incredibly strong, so I want to preserve it. I go to d4. I don't go to c3, because then the knight could take it, which is the same reason I don't go to f6. And my point is, if c5 is played, I'm not going to take the knight. Um, my plan, I believe, was to drop my bishop back, just to preserve the bishop. Or the computer wants something like queen h3. I don't know. Or I could even do this. Which... I, I was between doing this or going to f2. But I didn't have to make that decision. Because my opponent just retreats his knight. And the important thing is... The knight struggles to actually advance into my position. The only viable move... The viable square... Is f4. Which doesn't work. Because there's a pin and the rook hangs, right? So he goes to b6, just retreating. And because he's attacking my bishop, I drop it to b3. And we have this classic, like, geometric positioning of the knight and the bishop. Where there's two squares between them, and all the knight's forward moves are controlled by the bishop. This is often referred to as domination. So the knight's going to struggle to get back into the game. Which is why I liked this position so much. And why I played knight to d4, d5 in the first place. My opponent goes queen e7. Preparing to queenside castle. But I know that he can't queenside castle. Because if he does, then bishop f6 skewers the queen and the rook. Which will end up on d8. If he castles. So I go queen h3. The idea is to cut off black's ability to castle and attack the bishop. And if the bishop moves, attack the h6 pawn. Taking on h6 could be risky. After bishop g6, I do take it. It could be risky because you're thinking, if black manages to castle queenside, rook to h8 looks scary. But this bishop always controls h8, and there's no way for black to actually get rid of this bishop. After a move like c5, I can just drop the bishop back, or put it on f6, and I have constant control over this h8 square, so there's no ideas of attacking my queen with the rook, which is why I'm happy to take the pawn. My opponent does then castle, and I play the logical move, bishop f6. It's worth noting that castling is actually one of the best moves, even though it gives up an exchange. Because, well, I assume 
it's actually a semi-decent move because it means that h8 is available. Here, I just cash in. Bishop takes f7, bishop takes f7, rook takes f7, and I go up and exchange and two pawns. When you have an attacking position like this, I'm cutting the king off from castling. I could try to double up my rooks and continue the attack. But attacks don't have to end in checkmate. It's a massive like stumbling block for a lot of people where players will get a fantastic position, an aggressive position, and they'll have the opportunity to win material, but they'll be in checkmate mode. And they'll be like, no, no, I need to find checkmate. You don't need to find checkmate. Queen takes h6 is fine. And then winning the exchange and a pawn. I win two pawns and an exchange. Sure, I'm not going to mate him. But I don't need to mate him if I'm up so much material. My opponent gets his rook h8 in. I put my queen on e6 with check. King moves. And I play rook a to f1. I'm dominating the f file. And if this rook moves, then rook to f8 will win the queen. If the queen also moves, then I can force a trade of rooks here. The queen actually has no squares. The only squares it can go to are here, here, and here. Otherwise, it's going to die. And if it goes to either e8 or c8, I'm just going to trade it. Like, I'm going to trade and then force a trade of rooks. And if it goes to g8, I mean, I probably just put my queen here. Threaten checkmate. Um, and also threaten rook to f8 because my queen now controls that square too. So my opponent plays a5 to give his king an escape square, which is logical. I go queen f6, attacking the queen, attacking the queen, attacking the rook, and threatening rook to f8. So he's kind of forced to take me. I take with uh, the rook on the first rank so that I maintain pressure on the seventh with the other rook. My opponent goes rook h4, trying to get his rook into the game and avoid a trade of rooks on the back rank. And I play g3 just to kick it. He goes to h5 and I bring my king up. My idea is to restrict this rook as much as possible by controlling as many squares uh, that it can move to as I can. So he goes a4. He needs to try and break apart my pawn structure and get his knight into the game if he's going to have a chance here. So I play a3 to stop this pawn advancing. g4 is played to open the rook up. I just go rook g7 attacking the pawn and he can't defend it. So he goes rook c5 attacking my pawn. I play c3 which is a lot better than rook to f2 in my opinion because here the rook's passive and this pawn is still a weakness whereas if I go c3 the pawn is very well defended and after rook to b5 here I'm not so sad about playing rook to f2 because with c3 d4 is a defended square and I can go for an e5 push or I can just take this pawn and run the h pawn up right it's completely winning realistically so yeah c3 d5 with the idea of trying to get his knight into the game I take on g4 he takes, I take with the rook to keep my pawns together. He plays knight d5, attacking my rook. And there are a few tricks here. You know, if rook f5 is played, then knight e3 check. Forks the king and the rook. And after rook takes, rook takes rook. I'm up three pawns, but, you know, why give him the opportunity to trade his knight off? Instead, I go rook f8 check to get my rook off of this vulnerable forking square. And then play rook e5, because the knight goes here, I can take with the pawn, so I took my rook's defended. And if the knight gives a check on e3, I can just take with the rook. So we go c6, I go d4, rook b5, and then I bring my rook back to f2. 
here, I'm threatening c4. So my opponent play is forced to play knight c7. I get the trade of rooks. I throw the h-pawn down the board. And here I actually give my rook up. And I don't even take the knight back. I just push again because I'm going to get a queen. I do the exact same thing here. Just get another queen. And swiftly deliver checkmate. There's no reason to really look through that particularly far. It's just an easy conversion. But it is worth noting, like, I have kind of low time. I have 20 seconds. There's no point me, like, worrying too much about my rook being taken. I can just promote. And I can just promote again. And make it very easy for myself to win this game. So yeah, I just thought this was an interesting attacking game. Where my opponent's early g5 push just weakened his knight so significantly that after bishop d4, pressure on the pinned piece, he can't really do anything. He's forced into this horrible position where he's pushed all the way back. His king's struggling to find safety. And I just win a bunch of material and convert the end game very easily. Um, there's a few tricks with the knight coming to d5. But I just avoid them, promote, and deliver a very swift checkmate. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you stay till the end, please drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It would mean a lot to me. But with that being said, have a good one, guys.